I forgot to point one thing out, and this is that another co-founder of what was to become JPL, which was then the Guggenheim Aeronautical Laboratory, um, was a Chinese by the name of Sui Shi Xian, T S I E N, and this character will appear later on. Uh, because Arthur C. Clarke mentions him in 2010, the novel. Uh, other co-founders were Theodore von Karman, both got the von Karman Auditorium at JPL, if I remember well, and Frank Molina. Okay, to continue where we left off after Pearl Harbor, we have America, then uh, in World War II, another major staged event. And the idea was to use World War II to bring in a great fear of uh, of a very powerful weapon that would deaden mankind and make it subservient, subservient to a central authority as the only safeguard of peace and protection against this weapon ever being used so destructive and of course the weapon was to be the atom bomb uh, improperly called the atom bomb because it's really a nuclear bomb the energy is that of the nucleus although it might not even be that as we'll get to um, so we have the allied scientists working and we begin now with the symbolism in the Manhattan Project. Why was the secret development of the nuclear bomb called the Manhattan Project of all names? Think about that. What did New York have to do with it? Of course they can assign any random name to it, but think about Manhattan and think about the long range um, development of history, which of course is not accidental. As FDR said himself, um, nothing in politics happens by accident. Everything that happens was meant to happen. It's a phrase like that. Kind of meaning between the lines that most of the events we think are accidental have actually been long planned by the Illuminati and its, meaning, and its minions, of course. Okay, so we have the Manhattan Project developing the atom bomb with the best recruited scientists, American, and I think some Brits as well. Um, and the, the secrecy surrounding the development of the bomb was very high, very stringent, and there are many anecdotes about that. The next step in our story is how the detonation, the experimental detonation of the bomb, the first official nuclear detonation in human history, in official human history, was codenamed Trinity. All right, so think about that. We have the God Trinity concept which of course is an Illuminati concept, it has nothing to do with the real Jesus of Nazareth if, if he existed. And there are some witnesses who strongly argue he really did and, and the Illuminati want to usurp his righteous place on earth. So the, the Trinity is a false god, it's a false uh, free godhood. It's Osiris and Miramis and Horus, among other things. Um, so think about that. Trinity, number three. Where was Trinity carried out? Socorro, New Mexico, right? And the bomb was a plutonium implosion device. And the idea for the bomb came from a scientist at Caltech called Seth, S-E-T-H, Nether Mayer. 
Now think about that, set. That is almost set. In fact, it is set because the age in the Kabbalah numerology doesn't count. It's got the same energy and power as set, the Egyptian deity, which of course becomes Satan. Coincidence, huh? The, the name of this scientist who designed the first plutonium bomb, the first atom bomb in history to be successfully detonated was Seth Nedermeyer. And he developed the concept of imploding the plutonium to bring about fission so that the neutrons in the chain reaction would ignite other uh, plutonium nuclei before they um, hurtle off and escape. Uh, now, the notion for this was kind of uh, counseled by Richard Tolman, uh, Caltech, and of course the Richard Tolman professorship would we'll later go to Richard Feynman, um, who also worked at Los Alamos, of course. Now, where was the test site for Trinity placed? It was a 33.67 seven degrees latitude north. Now, agreeably, that's closer to the 34 than the 33rd parallel, but it's got the 33 in there somewhere. Now that place is called the White Sands Missile Range. Now, when did the explosion occur? July 16, 1945. 0716-1945. Now, if you